Good Sunday morning. Thank you for joining the Unity Church of God in Christ Sunday School Review on this Sunday, the 21st of February, 2021. We thank you for joining on today. I also thank God for life, and not only life, but that more abundantly through him. I thank God for our leaders, the leaders of the Unity Church of God in Christ, Pastor Anthony Rogers and our First Lady, First Lady Charlene Rogers. I also thank God for you, you who have taken the time consciously and have chosen to join the Unity Church of God in Christ Review. You are at the right place to receive the blessings from the Lord. I also honor our Sunday School Superintendent Deacon Joe Daniels and his companion, Sister Annie Daniels, as well as our Sunday School teachers, missionary Rachel Drake and Deacon Robert Delgado. I continually am thankful for the opportunity to review today's Sunday School lesson. Hallelujah. Our topic of discussion today is Priscilla. Priscilla called to minister. Again, Priscilla called to minister. This is lesson number 12 on today and are in our Sunday school literature. Our Bible basis, Bible truth and memory verse associated with today's lesson, Priscilla called to minister, Bible basis, the entire context Scripture context for our discussion is found in Acts, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 3. Also staying within that 18th chapter, we go to the verses 18 through 21, staying in that same chapter, verses 24 through 30, 26, and then Romans, the 16th chapter, verses 3 through 4. Our Bible truth Priscilla teaches along with her husband in the early church. Again, Priscilla teaches along with her husband in the early church. The Bible truth is so plain. The Bible truth, the goal of the Bible truth, the mission of the Bible truth is to take the entire Sunday school lesson and capture it in one sentence. Priscilla teaches along with her husband in the early church. The key word here is, the key word, excuse me, teaches along, not behind, <laughs> not at the direction of, but along, aside. They are a team. And that Bible truth captures the essence of today's lesson working together as a team. Our memory verse, greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also the churches of Gentiles. This is found in Romans 16, three through four specific to the King James Version. Our lesson aim for today, the lesson aim that coincides with this lesson, by the end of this lesson, we will research the life and ministry of Priscilla and her husband, Aquila. We will appreciate the ministry of those and explain the way of God with accuracy. And we will also seek opportunities to use our gifts, not only our gifts, but abilities to further the gospel. Our lesson aim this week tells us to research, appreciate, and seek. If we implement research, appreciate, and seek, we will be successful in achieving our lesson aim. The word research, we are familiar with this from past Sunday school lessons, but we will review the meaning of the word. It's a systematic investigation into are the studies of materials and sources, whatever is necessary to complete 
a thorough investigation of the facts. And with these facts, the goal with research is to come to a new conclusion, to come to new conclusions. Praise the Lord. So we thank God for the word research. The word appreciate, recognize the full worth of, to understand a situation fully. And then the word seek, attempt to find, to obtain or to achieve. The word attempt, just to uh, uh, explain it a little further, is to make an effort to try to achieve or to complete something. Praise God. Our lesson aim outlines research, appreciate, and seek as a three-step process to achieve success in our lesson aim. Hallelujah. Today, we're going to research. We're going to appreciate. And then that third step, seek should propel us. It should motivate us. It should, how should I say, push the button of action to do. Praise the Lord. And we will see in the scripture text today how these disciples, how these ambassadors of Christ were in the spirit to do. They researched, they were appreciative of the gospel, the good news of salvation. And because they were appreciative of it, it prompted them, it propelled them into action to seek others that they could share this good news with. Today, the goal of our Sunday school lesson is to have the same impact on you, the same impact on me. Hallelujah. To activate a button in the side of us to do, to be active ambassadors for Christ on this 24th, 21st day of February 2021. Today we will, if you'd be so kind, to look at these individuals who are the main focus of our discussion today as examples. We know the word example is used to capture a person or thing, a person or thing that is regarded in terms of their fitness to be in, imitated or the likelihood of them being imitated. Praise the Lord. Again, we're looking at the characters in our discussion today as we review these individuals, individual characters in the Bible. I want us to review and reflect on these individuals as examples, examples of how we as followers of Christ can mirror our daily walk, can mirror our actions with those in the community. Hallelujah. Can mirror their actions and examples in our interaction with one another within the believer's circle. These individuals today are examples. Praise God. Another word I'd like to clarify, we have reviewed the meaning uh, the topic of our lesson talks about Priscilla being called to minister. We know the word minister is a very specific word. Hallelujah. Minister, glory to God, speaks to or attends to the needs of someone. When you're ministering to someone, you're attending to their need for that moment, whatever it may be. Your job is to minister to that need. We thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost and his spirit that allows us at times to be able to discern, hallelujah, when we pray and ask for his help, determine the need of others so that we can effectively minister 
Praise God. And we will see ministering and demonstration today as well. Praise God. I mentioned the word earlier, teen. Asking as we enter today's lesson, we look at the characters that are outlined as team members. We know the meaning of the word team is together. Everyone achieves more. Team, hallelujah. The word team means something. The premise of the word, hallelujah, means togetherness, effective togetherness. Again, team, together, everyone achieves more. You come together collectively as a team to achieve a common goal. Anything other than teamwork is confusion. Hallelujah. Our goal today is to study the characters so that we can use them as our examples to collectively work together as teams. Hallelujah. To achieve the common goal of preaching the good news of Jesus, the gospel, the salvation of God offered through his son, Jesus. Background of today's lesson, we find ourselves this week focusing in the New Testament, which we have been, but our books specifically this week are the books of Acts and Romans. As we know, the book of Acts is Luke's part two writing, capturing the acts of the apostles as they are led and directed by the Comforter, as they're led and directed by the Holy Spirit to continue the ministry of Jesus. The book of Romans is written by the Apostle Paul to the church at Rome to encourage unity among believers, unity through God's plan of salvation for all Jew and Gentile. Praise the Lord. Our lesson today captures the, er I wasn't, I was going to say the original, but I can't say that. Back to ancient times, to the start of the early church, captures events that Luke writes about, as well as Paul writes about in the book of Romans, reflecting the activities of the early church and the participants, the individuals, the leaders who were part of, the leaders who set the standard, the leaders who set an example, the leaders who were models, the leaders who, glory to God, the early church followed. This is referenced in the book of Luke, and it is also referenced in the book of Romans. Hallelujah. Our scriptures today are used for informational purposes, but they're also used to provide an example of how we, the believer, are to work and what we are to do as ambassadors of Christ. We thank God for the gospel the gospel outlining examples, the gospel providing models of what we should do, how we should act, and how we should get along to further the gospel. Paul notes in the book of Romans, salvation comes by God's grace through faith. There's nothing absolutely that we can do to earn God's salvation, it comes through his grace by faith. Today, we will see how God uses a husband and wife team to help the furtherance of the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In part one, we see Paul meets Priscilla and Aquila. Part one of our lesson is titled, or the subtitle, of part one, Paul meets Aquila and Priscilla. This specifically is speaking to that 18th chapter 
the first three verses. We see specifically in that reading, the scripture outlines the fact that Paul, after he left Athens, <laughs> the scripture notes that his next stop was Corinth. Corinth in proximity to Athens was about 50 miles to the west. Our commentary notes the meaning of Athens is to discuss philosophy. For those who have not read and studied, it's good to read the basis or the context of our scripture lesson today, which is the 18th chapter of the book of Acts. But it's also great in your studying to read the chapters prior to the lesson of focus, as well as the scriptures following that chapter to get a clear meaning of what was taking place. Glory to God. So we see in the 17th chapter, it is my suggestion that you read it. It will help clarify the importance of why the meaning of Athens was important. There was an event that took place on Mars Hill in which Paul spoke to the heart of the people in that 17th chapter. After that event takes place, he leaves, and as the scripture states, is en route to Corinth. Paul's visit to Corinth represents many things. Hallelujah. Paul was on a mission. <laughs> Paul moved. Paul was not complacent. Paul was active. Corinth was the capital of the Roman province, Achaia, at that time. Corinth was known for its riches. Corinth was known for its luxury. Corinth was also known for its debauchery. We know debauchery is extreme indulgence in bodily pleasures and especially sexual pleasures. So Corinth was known again for its lavish luxury, riches, but also what you could find, hallelujah, in that city. A number of things to do. The temple of Aphrodite was also located in Corinth. At this location, it is reported that there were no fewer than 1,000 prostitutes that gathered at this location to offer and provide their services. This place that Paul was entering was known for its wanton sexual and illicit behavior. Paul was entering a metropolis known for wealth, again, known for luxury, and known for offering anything you wanted to find. Hallelujah. We see in the scripture, Paul was not deterred. Paul was not tempted by all of these things that existed in that city, by all the things the city had to offer. Paul's mind was focused. Paul had a mission and that was spreading the gospel of salvation, the good news of Jesus Christ. Paul had the mindset that this location, hallelujah, and his spreading the gospel would allow him to impact and change the trajectory of many lives, of several lives. This location was a city, hallelujah, in which the harvest was ripe. Paul was not deterred. Paul was not blinded. Paul was not confused nor clouded by what was taking place in the city. Paul was encouraged to enter in by what he knew the gospel could do to revive, to restore glory, the mind and the attitudes of the inhabitants therein. Glory to God. People of the Lord, are you like Paul led by the spirit to witness 
Or are you impacted by the size of the city and practices of the inhabitants thereof? Thank God we are behind closed doors. And these are times when we can ask ourselves these questions. This will require careful thought before answering. But people of God, are you deterred by the size of the city and what is taking place at times by the inhabitants thereof? Hallelujah, we need to be like Paul or we must be and follow the example that Paul led regardless of what we see by our eyes, regardless of what is hallelujah offered, regardless of what something is known for, we need to look at it. Hallelujah of what God can do, how God can reset, how God can restore, how God can revive, how God can renew the heart and the desires within to change the trajectory of any man or woman or boy or girl. Glory to God. Do not allow what you see on the outside to cloud or block your mission of what God can do on the inside. Hallelujah. We see Paul entered, again, part one, Paul meets Priscilla and Aquila. Paul entered this city to do. Paul entered this city to work. Hallelujah. <laughs> Paul entered again this city to work. Paul finds, the scripture notes, a certain Jew named Aquila. The scripture validates Aquila and his wife Priscilla as living, hallelujah, and they're, it outlines the fact that they're living, they're human beings, and it also provides their origin, where they originated from, as well as the fact that they were new inhabitants at Corinth. Claudius was the fourth emperor of Rome, and it was necessary for Aquila and Priscilla to leave Rome. That was their residence. Claudius made a decree. He wanted all the Christians and all the Jews to depart from Rome. They were banished from Rome because of their bickering, because of the bickering that took place between the Christian and Jews associated with their beliefs or disbelief in who Jesus was. The infighting amongst believers resulted in banishment. <laughs> Hallelujah. The way we believe, who we believe. It was so much that they were banished. People of God, we pray those things do not happen to the people of God in this day and time. Hallelujah. We know, hallelujah, what they eventually learned at that time. It takes the power of God to eliminate insurrections and to promote team, the spirit of teamwork, to promote the spirit of unity. Anything else is confusion. Anything else other than teamwork, other than promoting togetherness, is of the devil. These things of the devil impact. They block the work and mission of the believers are ambassadors of Christ. Let's ensure our goal, our focus is on the mission, the mission of togetherness the mission of teamwork, because with teamwork, we can get more accomplished. Hallelujah. Again, part one. We're continuing on that 18th chapter, verses one through three. Paul found this couple. When he found them, he stayed with them. He stayed with them because they were of the same craft. He stayed with them because they were fellow believers. He stayed with them because they were friends. Just like when 
we hallelujah have friends when we have individuals of like mind when we go to certain cities our first thought is to seek those people out to seek individuals out who are of like mind to seek individuals out who may be able to help us glory to god hallelujah first it is important to realize these individuals were positive people in Paul's eyes because as the scripture states, he arrived into town and he immediately sought them out. We know from previous scripture readings, Paul was a person, hallelujah, of conviction. He did not play any games. Therefore, we can assume he was real. Hallelujah. Now, therefore, we can assume those individuals he associated with were of like mind. They were serious in their message. They were serious in their mission. And Paul sent them out, sought them to help him. Glory to God. The scripture states, Aquila and Priscilla were tent makers. They had an occupation and they also spread the gospel. Tent making was a very lucrative, a very lucrative career at that time and was very transferable from a career perspective by region. This allowed evangelists or people who spread the gospel to be able to move around from city to city and also be able to provide, to find work, to provide for their care, as well as contribute to their gospel ministry. Paul came to that location to spread the gospel of salvation. But Paul also came to show that he was willing to put in the time to care and contribute, hallelujah, for his personal welfare, as well as to contribute to the spreading of the gospel. Paul was a full-time preacher, but also worked. Again, we're looking at these individuals as examples. He was a full-time preacher who worked. Part two, Priscilla and Aquila help Paul. Praise the Lord. The scripture notes, and this is the second part, or part two of our subtopic, Priscilla and Aquila help Paul. We're going through these subtopics just to show you how Priscilla was helpful in the ministry and delivering the ministry of the gospel. Hallelujah. How she helped her husband, but also how she helped Paul. She was not referenced as a sub part of or someone lesser than, but someone who equally contributed to the furtherance of the good news of Jesus Christ. Not only did she contribute to that, we see from our part one that she also worked. She held her own, hallelujah, <laughs> at home and on the job. Priscilla was an example and Aquila was an example as well. Many people say, I don't know if I could work and <laughs> work all day with my wife, but we see in this situation of examples, they work together, they preach the gospel together, and there was no problem. There was harmony. Not only were these two individuals demonstrating teamwork prior to Paul, meeting them or sinking with them again. That team were continued, hallelujah, after Paul encountered them. Praise the Lord, after Paul began to stay with them. The scripture states that they three stayed at Corinth for 18 months. They worked together as a team building 
tents, spreading the gospel and living together for 18 months. We assume, I often say the word assume, that things went well, their relationship went well, they were together for 18 months, but they also departed at the same time, glory to God, and left for a new location. If in fact you were not getting together, getting along together, well, for 18 months, I wouldn't want to go anywhere with you. Thus, my assumption is these individuals prayed, worked, and preached the gospel together as a team and got along well. Hallelujah. The scripture notes that Paul, when he departed, he referred to the individuals there as brethren. This town of Corinth, this city of Corinth that he entered with debauchery and a lot of illicit behavior, glory to God, his impact there in that city for 18 months was profound. He was able to leave referring to individuals as brethren. Hallelujah. The same things happen to us when we are converted, when we are changed, our name changes to brother. Our name changes to sister. Therefore, we know that the message of Paul, Aquila and Priscilla was effective in this metropolitan city. Hallelujah. Effective so because the names of the individuals had changed and it was referred to as brethren. Glory to God. They leave and they set sail in Ephesus. Excuse me. And while in Ephesus, it, scripture refers that Paul continues his journey of going directly to the synagogues. His goal was to preach the gospel. He went to the synagogues and if they received it, he continued there. If he did not, he would shake the dust off his raiment as is referenced in the earlier verses of the 18th chapter and move on to the next place. Paul's ministry was impactful. Paul's ministry was effective. This ministry was impactful and effective because it was demonstrated in the spirit of teamwork. Glory to God. The leaders of the Jewish community respected Paul's message. The leaders, as well as Priscilla and Aquila, asked Paul to stay, but it was necessary. Again, people of God, Paul was on a mission to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, and he knew his days were numbered. He knew he had a certain amount of time, and it was necessary for him to fulfill the works of him that sent him while it was day. Hallelujah. Paul left again because he had a job to do. But he left in confidence. He left that location in confidence that the individuals remaining, Priscilla and Aquila, Aquila and Priscilla, however you would like to say it, they were able to further the ministry. He left with the understanding he may not actually return. Why do I say that? Because he noted if it would be the will of God, he would return. Paul left with the understanding that he was leaving these individuals there capable male and female, female and male, to carry on, to grow the church. These individuals were instrumental. These individuals were key to the success of the early church. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In our viewing these individuals as examples today, we know Hallelujah, couples. We know men and women are both important. They are integral to the effective, impactful ministry 
of Jesus Christ today. We cannot do it alone. We must be workers together, male and female. Hallelujah. We must work together. We must be team players. Hallelujah. Be it a married couple and our people of God working together as a team of believers. Who you are, what color you are, what sex you are should not matter. It does not matter. The gospel of Jesus Christ is to every believer and it does not specify what sex you are. It does not specify what color you are. Hallelujah. Salvation is for all. Hallelujah. Jesus is the savior of the world, regardless of who you are, regardless of where you live, regardless if there's sin all around you, regardless if there's lewd behavior and activity, all around you. Jesus is in the midst. Hallelujah. Just as he changed the hearts of men and women at Corinth, he can do the same for you. Hallelujah. He used this power couple. He used Aquila and Priscilla to make a difference at Ephesus. He used this couple to further the gospel message. Hallelujah. Teamwork is important in spreading the gospel. Teamwork is important in ministering to the needs of people. Teamwork is important. It is imperative. People of God, if we cannot cooperate, if we cannot properly function as a team here on earth to propel men and women, to change the trajectory of men and women, we certainly will not find ourselves in heaven. Glory to God. Everything that Jesus teaches, everything that God has shared lets us know we have to depend on him and he on us and we his son. This all demonstrates teamwork. Anytime you are doing it alone, you are selfish and you are limiting the power of the gospel. Glory to God. Paul departed knowing he was leaving a functioning, capable team to further the growth of the church. Part three, Priscilla and Aquila teach Apollos. We see in the 18th chapter, verses 24 through 26, Aquila and Priscilla encounter an individual Praise the Lord. Part three notes that they teach. They impart knowledge into or to this person. But let's first look at the description of the individual Apollos. The description states in the scripture, again, verses 24 through 26, we find so much content. He was Jewish. He was born at Alexandria. The scripture states he was an eloquent man. He was mighty in the scriptures. He was not only eloquent and mighty in the scriptures, but he was instructed. And when we say instructed, we know formally instructed in the way of the Lord. He was also fervent in spirit. We say formally instructed that by through uh, Christian education, Sunday school, etc., and through his parents. He also notes, the scripture notes he was fervent in spirit. It also notes that he spake and taught diligently. But he had a limitation in his teaching. He had a limitation in his understanding. He had a limitation in what he believed. It 
was not a bad thing, but it was a limitation. Hallelujah. There are times in life where we're impacted by limitations. There is nothing wrong with limitations, but we have to hear and listen to the Spirit of God. We have to hear and be willing participants. We have to hear and be willing to work together as a team to further the message, to remove the limitations, to unblock those things that impact our ability to move forward. Hallelujah. When we are ministering, when we are ministering to the needs of people, we are ministering to what is impacting them at that present time. Hallelujah. The scripture teaches not only did Aquila and Priscilla teach Apollos, they ministered to his need. Glory to God. It was necessary for him to be enlightened about who Jesus was. He had the knowledge up to the message in the time of John the Baptist, but it was necessary for him to learn about the fullness of Jesus and what he had done, his life and his resurrection and how it could benefit him. Glory to God. This man, again, who was a Jew, this man who was born in Alexandria, this man who was eloquent, mighty in the scriptures and instructed in the way of the Lord, who was fervent in spirit. He was well equipped. He was somebody, but he still was limited. Glory to God. This limited person in his belief accepted, hallelujah, the fact that he needed to know more. This individual who was well-educated was so sincere in his pursuit of the gospel. Hallelujah, he listened. He was not impacted by who he was and his great education and his wonderful background. That was no impact to him. This individual, of reputation, this individual of knowledge, hallelujah, was taught by two tent makers. Glory to God. Taught by a husband and wife team. He humbled himself. He did not care about their occupation. He did not care that they did not do the same work. They did not come from the same background. He did not care. That was irrelevant. He had an ear to hear what they had to say. They too were not impacted by who he was. They also had an ear to hear. They needed to teach and minister to this young man. He impressed them. He too impacted them by the confidence of his message, by the words he said, by the drive and the power and the passion of his message, but they knew, hallelujah, his message would even be more impactful if he was fully aware of what God can do. They were not jealous of the impact that this individual could possibly have. They were not jealous by his ministry possibly blowing up and maybe being larger than theirs. Their goal was to teach him. Their goal was to minister to the need and the fact that was that he needed to understand the gospel in a more excellent way. Hallelujah. It was their job to minister to him. It was their job to aid him collectively as a team so that he, Apollos, could expand his footprint in the gospel. People of God, Apollos 
a willing heart to listen. And Aquila and Priscilla had a willing heart to teach. We have to be willing to teach. We have to be willing to listen when you're willing to teach and offer your abilities and offer your gifts to people in the household of faith, to people in your community. You are ministering. You are witnessing. You are furthering the message of the gospel. When you choose to keep your knowledge inside, when you choose not to share, when you choose to keep what God has given you, you are being selfish. You are not operating in the spirit of excellence. You are not operating in the spirit of teamwork. You are not functioning as an ambassador of Christ and you are not furthering the message of the gospel. You are not a team player. You are selfish. Again, people of God, it is imperative that we be team players. Team players in our home first, working together in the home and then taking that same spirit into the community, to the church and to the world. Priscilla and Aquila teach Apollos. And we read further that when they did, he listened and his ministry was impactful. His ministry grew. The scripture validates the effective impact of the teachings of, again, this power couple. Paul four, excuse me, part four of today's lesson, clearly Paul salutes Priscilla and Aquila. Part four takes place in Romans, the 16th chapter, verses three to four. Paul refers to Priscilla and Aquila as his helpers, his helpers who did something for him. He identifies these individuals by a sacrifice they made. The scripture does not give specifics about it, but the fact Paul references it, their actions, their beliefs, their willingness to be a team to help the furtherance of the gospel, their willingness as a team to lay their lives down on behalf of someone else was memorable to Paul. Paul states they laid down their own necks on his behalf. Not only is Paul grateful, but he makes reference that the entire Gentile church should also be grateful. It would lead one to believe that whatever happened, whatever activity took place, where these individuals chose as a couple to lay down their lives. Again, even at death's door, this demonstrates this power couple was operating in a spirit of unity. Glory to God, even to the point of laying down their lives, putting their own necks on the line, for the furtherance of the gospel. Hallelujah. They did so for Paul's sake. And had they not done it, it appears that the entire Gentile church, or glory to God, may have been impacted. Paul was a fearless defender of the gospel. Hallelujah. But these individuals, this power couple, this couple who was an example, this evangelist who was an example, Paul and the evangelist Aquila and Priscilla who worked along beside him were examples, were models of how we can collectively through a team work with dedication and unity 
to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ even to the point of death. Again, people of God, it says something powerful. It says something strong. These individuals loved God, but they also loved one another. There was harmony in the home. There was harmony in their relationship. There was harmony in their friendship with Paul. They were not jealous. They were not jealous of Paul. They wanted to further his ministry. Team work is important. There is no time for selfishness. There is no time for jealousy in the work of God. Hallelujah. Let us look at the examples that have been provided in today's lesson by Aquila and Priscilla and arm ourselves likewise. These were friends of Paul. Hallelujah. And as for stated, Paul was a fervent, fearless believer and promoter of the gospel. And because of his stand, because of who he was, we know that he associated himself with like-minded people. Like-minded so that they stayed together for 18 months. People of God, don't be scared to enter into big cities. Don't be scared what you see. Hallelujah. Collectively, through teamwork, we can conquer. Through teamwork, we can promote. Through teamwork, we can help people see a more excellent way through Jesus Christ. Through teamwork, women and men collectively together had an imprint on the footprint of the early church. Together, men and women, women and men collectively have had an impact and imprint on the church that has existed until COVID. And it will be women and men and men and women collectively working together to expand the footprint of the church by spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ as a team to women and men and men and women everywhere, regardless of your color, regardless of your sex, that Jesus Christ is Lord. We cannot be successful until we work together as a team. Praise the Lord. If you're not a team player, you are a selfish individual and you need to review yourself today and your actions and ask God to help you. Ask God to help you on February the 21st, expand who you are. Open your mind and ask God to save you, to help you so that you too can be a team player. You too can be a part of a power couple if that is God's will for you. Praise the Lord. For those of you who view and attend our weekly review and do not have the Sunday School Literature, our lesson for next week is titled, Lydia Called to Serve. Again, the title of our discussion next week, next Sunday being February 28th, Lydia Called to Serve. Next Sunday's lesson is lesson number 13. The Bible basis for that discussion is Acts, the 16th chapter, verses 11 through 15, and Acts, the 16th chapter, verse 40. We will also be reviewing 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 26 through 30. Again, Lydia called to serve. Our lessons that we have been reviewing show us that God equipped both male and female to be evangelists, to be ministers, and to speak to the needs of God's people. Hallelujah. He also gave them the ability, women, to prophesy. God has equipped those whom he calls to be effective ministers. Hallelujah. Our prayer today 
We thank you, Father, for the example of Priscilla and Aquila who worked in the ministry together. Strengthen the marriages of those who labor in the vineyard on your behalf. Thank you for our pastor and his wife, as well as those who lead and teach. Give them wisdom, willing hands to help, and listening ears to hear one another's hearts. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. I want to ask you to please remember to give today. Your giving options are displayed at the bottom of the screen. Please also remember to tune in promptly at 11 a.m. today. People of God, we will have an awesome word coming to you, a word of life, a word that speaks hope. Please join us. You are welcome. And again, thank you for joining the Unity Church of God in Christ Sunday School Review on this Sunday. Be blessed and have an awesome week.